Hello everyone again, this time for TV. Clearly, an inordinate amount of people wanted to know what I thought about TV shows. It's going to be a shorter video, there's only like 10 things rather than 30. But um, if you hear purring, it's because I'm currently very popular with a cat. Isn't it right, Mary? Good boy. Anyway, well, here you go for some list of some TV shows I can speak well, can't I? Here you go, my list of some TV shows to check out while you're stuck in isolation. Like with the film videos, I'll be doing this without any editing because I don't have access to my editing machine at the moment. And uh, the visual that you see there, Omega put that in. Omega, the wonderful, the amazing, put that in. I had to actually send the MP3, unedited audio MP3, so they could put that in. So I could upload it to YouTube, because YouTube won't let you upload stuff without a visual. Anyway, because I don't have access to my editing machine at the moment, so stumble, stumble, stumble over my lines. This is unedited. Oh god, I'm bad at voiceover. I fucking love fucking up lines. No, I hate it. If you're seeing some visuals right now, as in clips from the TV shows or whatever, that means you're watching the updated version that I put together after I got home. Um, if you're not seeing the clips and stuff, you're just seeing a still image, then treat this as a podcast, you know, ignore it, whatever. Go and, I don't know, bathe your cat or something. I got cats in my mind because I got a cat in front of me. Like the films, these aren't all good, but they're all entertaining and hopefully you haven't heard of them. Given enough time and tenacity, you could probably find most of these. Spiral Zone. This is on YouTube. Probably the darkest of the 80s toy-based cartoons. Spiral Zone is so dark that it could easily be remade as a Walking Dead-style drama. This guy called Overlord has created a so-called Spiral Zone about half the world. Everyone inside it is a mutated, mindless slave, and our heroes are a crack team of military types who travel in to rescue people or to cause trouble for Overlord. Also, it is a fucking amazing theme song. Lex, the best original sci-fi show of the 90s, was a Canadian and German co-production. It's camp, creative, and weird. Heavily sexual, but still sophomoric energy that's... I'll change that. It's camp, creative, and weird. Heavily sexual, but it's sophomoric energy is... God damn it, this line makes no sense. It's camp, creative, and weird. It's heavily sexual, but still sophomoric energy is much more common now. But back in 1997, DS9 and Babylon 5 were considered the, edgy, the edgiest of TV sci-fi. Each of its four seasons are very different from the Dune by way of heavy metal first to the more traditional season arc with a big bad second um, to the proto-bingeable third that raises all kind of theological questions to the near sitcom fourth that mercilessly parry... I might just restart with Lex, because fucking hell. Lex, the best original sci-fi show of the 90s, was a Canadian-German co-production. It's camp creative and weird, heavily sexual, but still sophomoric energy is much more common now, but back in 1987, DS9 and Babylon 5 were considered edgy TV sci-fi. It's four, Each of its four seasons are very different, from the Dune by way of heavy metal first, to the traditional season arc with a big bad second that kills a universe to the proto bingeable third that raises all kinds of questions theologically about god damn it the third one's all theological okay i should probably stop scripting this shit anyway to the fourth which is basically a sitcom and mercilessly parodies early 2000s american paranoia lex is one of a kind millennium is an x-files spin-off unlike the lone gunman the other x-files spin-off it's far better than the x-files yeah i said it Come get me, bro. But with Millennium, I'd suggest avoiding Season 3. Season 1 is basically Seven, the serial killer film, the TV show. And Season 2 is an offbeat theological epic and one of the best single seasons ever made in TV history. But avoid Season 3 and watch The Lone Gunman instead. It deserves the rabid fan base that Firefly got. Mud, a British kids TV show from the mid-90s, is incredibly imaginative in the second season. Season 1 is well written for a kids show, but it lacks the spark of season 2. The spark being an epic tale of revenge, magic, the end of the world, time travel, and one of the best twists in TV history. Ooh, I'm selling it. That's also on YouTube. Future Man. This is a show on Hulu, and I haven't loved a new show this much since Danger 5. It starts off as a parody of The Last Starfighter and Terminator, but with Mad Max-style future people, and it quickly grows to encompass most concepts in sci-fi. I adore this show. It's a glorious love letter to sci-fi in general in the 80s in particular. 
and honestly, I think you'll love it too. Maid Marian and Her Merry Men. This is basically a kid's version of Blackadder written by Tony Robinson, who played Baldrick on Blackadder. It's about the hyper-competent Maid Marian leading Her Merry Men, including the probably gay Robin Hood, and a Rastafarian book played by Danny John Jules, aka Cat from Red Dwarf, against the Sheriff and his dim-witted forces. It's intelligently childish, as in it's childish, but was clearly written by somebody smart, and also knows their shit about the medieval times. Also, the ending theme is a fucking gospel song. Fucking great. Brimstone is one of those 90s shows that kind of fell through the cracks, and it's a damn shame. It's about a cop who was sent to hell after murdering his wife's rapist, and while in hell, the devil, played by John Glover, gives him a mission. Return to hell and stop 113 evil souls who have escaped, and then return them to hell. Violently. You might recognize the concept from the show Reaper, that's because it's basically the same, but Brimstone is better because it's got awesome amounts of goth cheese. I know I mentioned Danger 5, but this is the shit. The first season is a perfect piss take of 1960s spy and adventure shows. It's what might have happened if Monty Python worked for Irwin Allen instead of the BBC. And while I like season 2 less... And while I like... Th and while I like season 2 less, because Eddie's parties are so common it's a fucking blah... God damn it! And while I like season two less, because Eddie's parodies are so common, it's still a fucking blast. Check out Danger 5. It's an amazing six hours you will want to relive over and over again. Scream Queens is from the guy who invented Glee, an American horror story, and it basically mashes the two together. It's an eight-hour slasher movie filled with the worst kind of people from Mean Girls, Heathers, Assassination Nation, and more. Season one is a masterpiece. Season 2 isn't, but it's still entertaining. Starfleet is a Japanese show, a typical long-form anime space epic, but it's been made with Jerry Anderson-style puppets. It was a massive flop in Japan, but really popular in the UK, where puppet-based action shows have a long and glorious history. It's a great show, and this is unrelated, but Brian May and Eddie Van Halen did a cover version of the theme song. It was fucking awesome. And as an honorary mention, Blood Drive. I A, don't understand how this got made, and B, I'm really sad that they came down after a season and cancelled it. It's a Mad Max type future with cars running human blood. It's a cross-country race, and every episode is a different exploitation genre. It's not fantastic, but we should all feel honoured to live in the world's... But, bleh. It's not fantastic, but we should all feel honoured to live in the same world as it. So there you go. That was 10 or possibly 11 TV shows that you might not have seen. I suggest you watch because they're fucking awesome to varying degrees. If I had to choose one, probably Danger 5, but any of these are well worth your watch. Well worth your time, even. And uh, everyone, please, stay safe, okay? I, I'm concerned. Oh no, how do I turn this machine off? I have no idea how to run Audacity. Oh no, my god, I just bought this new equipment and what's going on? Ah, dramatic flailing.